Trumpeter swans, the largest swan in the world, native only to North America, were hunted out of existence in Ontario, with the last one shot by a hunter in Long Point in 1886. By the 1930s, it was thought there were only 69 individual trumpeters remaining in the western U.S. But then a small flock in Alaska was discovered, and the U.S. decided to restore the species, banning hunting and preserving habitat. Nothing happened here in Ontario until Harry Lumsden, a retired Ministry of Natural Resources biologist, decided to start a restoration program in the early 1980s. He obtained eggs from the Alaskan flock and found volunteers to raise them in captivity. Having loved swans since she was small, Bev Kingdon, who then had a farm in Chisholm Township, took action. So I called my husband in Italy and I said, honey, can I get some swans put on the pond? We've got a we, at the farm, we have the pond, we have the island, could I ask for a pair of captive birds and we'll raise cygnets for release to the wild. He says, Bev, I'm in Italy. Oh, I know, I know, honey, but you'll be home. Can no, 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 leather, jewelry, gold. I mean, there's so much here in Italy. Ray, I only want a swan. I only want a pond. I only want an island. Can't I please have an island and a pond? So that's how it all started. The Trumpeter Swan Restoration Project, as we affectionately call it, uh, saw the first trumpeter migrate in over 100 years, coming from the Weimarsh to LaSalle Park. Uh, and that started in 1993, over the year, um, and you'll hear more about our first resident swan, uh, mig migrating to LaSalle Park and bringing their cygnets, the little babies, Another volunteer who had helped raise swans in captivity called Bev to say one of her flock had gone missing. That swan knew her name and Bev was to try to lure her in by calling her. And I'm going to stand on the shore and I'm going to start screaming, pig pen at the top of my lungs. And most everybody knows me because I was one of the larger bankers that, like we had a lot of customers. <laughs> Oh no, really Mary, like isn't there something? No, no, you gotta call her pig pen. So you can't resist, like the, the draw is just terrible. It's, a, it's a, an addiction. So I go up and I, I get out on the shore and I start calling pig pen and waving my arms like as if she's gonna recognize the, the seven and a half foot wingspan I've got, you know. And so I start yelling and doesn't she come? Harry Lumsden rushed down from Aurora to confirm the monumental event. Pigpen and her mate returned year after year, bringing more and more of their cygnets with them. This helped make LaSalle Park instrumental in the restoration of the trumpeter swan population that now exceeds 1,000 birds in Ontario. And today LaSalle Park is distinguished as being the overwintering site for more trumpeters than any other spot in the province. We are citizen scientists. We do a lot of work uh, to band and tag and track the swans um, for a variety of reasons. Number one, because they've been reintroduced, we want to see how far they go, where they go. Um, we've had reportings of Ontario tag trumpeter swans as far east as Nova Scotia, as far west as uh, Wisconsin, as far north as James Bay, and as far south as Tennessee. Over the weekend, a new sign was erected in LaSalle Park so visitors would know the history of the revival of the trumpeter swan population as well as the important role Bev and her husband Ray played. So on behalf of the trumpeter swan conservation group, I have to get used to the new name. We've moved from restoration to conservation. And I want to give you a certificate of appreciation, Bev, for everything that you've done. Reporting for Halton News, I'm Nikki Wesley.